Today's project on uh, this damn house is going to be a... It's a wobbly handstand trainer. Um, it's not original. I saw it online. And I think it's going to be a fun, easy project to make. It's not really complex. Not a lot of tools involved. And uh, it's going to involve some springs. So we'll, I'll share with you the link to procure the springs themselves. And... Um, yeah, it's going to be a really fun, simple project. It's going to be really good for people that have a really solid handstand already. Because um, it provides an additional level of like difficulty. It also strengthens the wrist a lot. So, if you have a good handstand for... Um, just in general, this is going to be the project you're going to want to use to help yourself take your uh, handstand practice to another level. So, um, best of luck, and I hope that you enjoy this. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to like uh, build up the, uh, the material so we can get the depth we need. Um, we're going to need to glue two pieces of plywood together to get this depth. Okay, so you can see that. So it's going to be one and a half inch thick by the time we're done. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut some strips along this. And they're going to be... Uh, like calculate we're gonna use um, let's see okay we're gonna use um, four and a quarter it's gonna be a little bit wider because uh, what we'll do is uh, after we're done we're gonna do another rip cut along it to make it really perfectly flat so it looks really nice on the presentation level at the end of it so here we go. So I'm going to mark it, right? So one, two, three, four. Uh, let's do, just do four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. So here's four and a half. Okay. So what will happen, right? That's going to be the base width. This is going to be the, the top. The top is going to be three inches. So it's going to sit on top of it like that, okay? Uh, actually, let's recalculate this again. Instead of doing four and a half, let's do four and three-fourths of an inch. So four and three-fourths of an inch. Okay, so here we go. Because again, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut off the... Uh, Yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to do another rip cut at the end of it, just to make sure it looks nice and neat at the end. So we need four and a, again, four and a uh, quarter. Yep, four and a quarter inch cut. All right. Like that, like that, like that, like that. Stick them together. Uh, glue them together, and then we're going to make the tops and the bottoms. So again, I can't, this is going to be four, from here to here, is four and three-fourths of an inch. Okay? So that's four and three-fourths of an inch.
So what I did, I cut uh, 10 inches off of the larger piece of plywood just to make it a little bit more manageable. And then what I'm going to do now is, uh, again, I'm going to cut off, I'm going to do another rip cut down the middle of this. It's going to be, uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, this looks like four and a uh, four and a half. Let's see what this looks like over here. Yep, four and a half going this way. So one, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this down down the middle. So I'm going to do. Um, yes, yeah, so it would be. Uh, this is one, two. Th one, two, three, four, four and a half is right here. Right. That's four and a half. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do four and a quarter here. So this four and a quarter is going to be the middle. Like that. And I'm going to cut this down the middle. I leave a little bit on the edge so I can get it perfect. Because I'm going to do another rib cut to make it really clean at the very, very end. Okay? So, from here to here is, yeah, this is, it's already marked actually. From here to here is going to be four and a quarter. And I'm just going to rip cut it down the middle on this line right here. And then I'll have four and a quarter there, four and a quarter here. And then uh, we'll continue from that. going to do now is uh, glue these pieces together. So I have a bucket of warm water already prepared with a rag so that way I can wipe up the glue. But before I glue these right I want to make sure I find the most flat side. See, so that's the original side right there with that spray paint marking. So that's going to be the flattest side. And That looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna cover this marking right here. So it's a great way to keep you from trying to sand a lot at the very end because you're trying to hide stuff. So there's the glue. So that's a lot, a lot of glue. It's going to go really well and stick the pieces together here. Put that excess stuff back. these two together like this.
what I want to do. I want to make a, a little block right here so, so this doesn't slide too much. Right, so I'm going to go like this. Take this, put that there. And that'll keep it, this, the, these ends butt together. To butt together, and then what I'm going to do now is uh, get a wipe some glue off. I'm going to take this piece here, I'm going to put it like this, and that way, you use this one. This is longer. So that way I know that this entire piece in the, is now squared off all sides. I'm going to clamp this down. Clamping is truly an art. It's difficult to get these things right. It's so, so difficult. Yeah. Alright, so what you... What you want to do is put a clamp here, clamp this down, clamp this block down, right? Put the piece together and then you have it, just let it sit for a little bit. Once it sits for a little bit, it'll, it'll slide a lot less and you can go ahead and add more pressure onto it with more clamps, okay? So now I had it sit for 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good clamp down. Um, so I'm going to use these pieces of wood here. Let's see if I can get a good clamp. I'm going to put this here because what I'm going to do is uh, just to help minimize the sliding that happens naturally. Something like that. Pull those close together. Like this. Um, yeah, that should work. And then I'm going to cut that down. I'm not going to go too, too hard right away because I just need to like uh, get this started. <laughs> I don't know what I thought was going to happen by doing that just now. Just 
somebody told me the other day that uh, stoners really like watching these long ass videos I make. So if you're a stoner, happy 420, man. It's coming, 420. It's coming. I'm not really sure why a stoner would like a video like this. Whatever, I guess it's therapeutic. So you can see the glue squeezing out. I'm gonna try to wipe some of it out if it gets too hard to tackle later on. All right, and that's it. Let that sit for another hour, two hours, now like an hour, and then we can uh, continue. All right, so here's the clamping job I did, right? So I placed this block here at the end to keep it from sliding and to light it up. And I had uh, these two clamps. I clamped this one down and that one down so I can squeeze them together, right? So, and then I just put the pressure downwards. And that's what I did just to get the, uh, the piece lined up. So I'm gonna take these off. happening because the glue kind of stuck these two well that was that was that was easy uh, aha right so that one's gonna be a little gonna knock this one off So that's the four inch piece. Okay, over here, right? What I have is the, uh, this piece right here. What I'm gonna do, this is gonna be the three inch top, three inch in, in width tops that I'm gonna use. And that's gonna sit on top of this, like this. And then we have a Hanson wobbly cane that goes like that, all right? What I'm gonna do now is uh, take this piece of wood. I'm gonna make it like three and a, it's like a little bit like three and a half inch. It's three and a half inch in width. I'm gonna try to rip that off so it's exactly three and a half inch in, in width. In width. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that cut right now.
So here's my piece. I already rip cut it. It's three and a half inches in width. This side is already flat, all right, because it's nice. It's I've cut both of them together. I want to do the same thing for this side. Now let's say your this side didn't look so drastic. It was just two pieces you kind of guessed at. You still want to do the same process, all right? So you want to flip it over, put it next to the uh, the edge, because you want to get that side to be perfectly flat because of what you're trying to do, all right? So I'm put my uh, put my glasses on and my respirator. I'm gonna cut that off. Alright, so now what I've done, I've created a, a perfectly flat side on both sides, which is important. Because now I'm going to take the router while it's in this bigger pe um, bigger format and I'm going to route around it. So, And I'll have to do a one last finish router and routing when I'm in, a, um, in the smaller pieces, okay? This is the base right here. I'm going to do the same kind of cutting on the edge just to make it nice and even as possible. So I take the flattest side of the piece like that. I'm just going to cut down on this side and cut down that side just to make it as flat as possible. Again, don't forget your glasses and your respirator. Alright, so this is the base. These sides are nice and even. These sides are not so nice and even, so I'm going to have to route those out, I think. I was going to do a table saw, but I think I'll just route it out and try to get as flat as possible. And then this is the, this is the top, okay? Here is the spring that I'm going to use. It's got a, a two inch diameter, and this is going to be the top part top part is three and a half inches wide so I'll label this for you so from here this is three it's actually more like let me be precise it's three and nine sixteenths so almost all right so it's three and nine sixteenths from here to here. Okay? Now what I'm gonna do is go, I'm gonna go half of an inch in, right? That's what that line is. Two inches out over here. So this is two and a half. Right? That gives me one, two, two and a half. Here's my half, two and a half line. Right? I go another half inch from there to two and a half, two and a half equals three. This is three. So from three, right here, to another two, that's five, five, five and a half, right here. So the entire thing is five and a half in, in, in length, okay? With a with a half of half inch in between, so it's gonna end up looking like this. These are the holes I have to drill. Right? Something something like that. And something like this. Cool. There you go. So two holes, half inch in the beginning, half inch from the end, half inch at the end. Cut off right there. What I'm going to do now, I need to make a, so this is the, this is the example of what it's going to look like, the dimensions, half inch, two, half inch, two, half inch cut off, right? That's the top. Problem is, is that we need to make a template for this. So the tops will match the bottom, right? So this piece right here is the exact same width, right? As this bottom part. 
So I need to do the same markings here, right? And to do that, I'm gonna go like this. Again, do the same thing. So here we go. We have a half inch. Then we need to go two inches from there, so it's two and a half. Let's draw those lines. Okay. We've got another half inch. And then we do two more inches from that half inch. Then from this, I'm going to do another half inch. Right? I'm going to draw those lines. So that's the full thing right there. Now I got to do the center. So I'm going to go down the center of this, right? So this is three and a half. So it's going to be the center. That's going to be one and three fourths of an inch. So one and a quarter. No, sorry. Um, uh, this is one, two, three and a half. So, okay. All right. Okay. So that's what, what we have here is uh, yeah, one and three fourths. So we're gonna do. Uh, let's see, like that. Yeah. All right. So that should be the center. Like I said, one and three fourths. All right. So now we have the one and three fourths line down the middle. That's the center. All right. We have half inch here. From here to here is two inches. Can you see? Oh, you know what? I'm going to get a little closer. So we have a half inch from here to here. From here to here is two inches. From here to here is half of an inch, from here to here is two inches, and from here to here is a half of an inch. And that's the end of the template, right? These, this spring will reside right here, where the two inches, right between the two inches like that. Okay. The line down the middle is one and three-fourths of an inch. Right, and then what I need to do now is get the center of this. So let's just go ahead and get the center of that. So the center that's going to be right here. So I'm going to do the center of this also over here. Okay. I'm going to draw a line across. I didn't go all the way across just to make sure that I am doing strange. Okay. So you see those? This line here and that line, that's this is the center point right here. I need to drill a two inch hole diameter hole right here and right here. All right, so what I'm going to do now is set up the drill press to drill those two holes and I'm going to cut that off and that's going to be my... What I have is my drill press with a two inch uh, bit on it. I have the, 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 my drill template set into place. I have a piece of wood underneath it that I'm going to use as a sacrificial piece of wood. I'm using my clamp here just to add a little extra tension to hold this down. 
and uh, I'm gonna try to just drill a little two inch hole, move it over, drill another two inch hole. All right, let's do it. That's the perils. <laughs> Those are the perils you have to endure when you have cheap ass tools. A couple things going on. This doesn't have a lot of power. I think that bit itself may be a little bit under. Um, it's possible it's a little getting a little dull, but whatever. I'll save you the boredom of it. Do the same thing again to that hole right there. Okay. So here's the template that I just made, the drilling template. So it's just got a two holes or two. The two two-inch holes, right. really nice on the bottom part. It came out really well because I had the sacrificial piece of wood underneath. So what this will do, this is going to be the base. It's a little bit bigger than the top, right? I'm going to put this down like this for the tops and drill them out, okay? And they're going to go close to the uh, bottom. They're going to go by like a, let's say like about all the way down to about a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, right? Same thing for the bottom here. I'm gonna drill this all the way down to about a quarter of an inch. And uh, what's important here, right, is uh, this top template, it doesn't have to match the exact same size because this bottom's gonna be a little bit offset, the holes, so it's gonna be like that. It's not gonna be at the very, very edge. Only the, only the top is gonna be at the very, very edge. The bottom's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like a half inch back. Okay. So what I'm change your plans. I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna cut this template. I'm gonna keep it as it is. It's gonna be easier to work with. For some reason I've forgotten about that from woodworking. But anyway, so I'm gonna line this up right. So now the ends are lined up. I'm going to tape this together.
boy, this is fun to watch, isn't it? Yep. So what happens the mask can take over over time, it just gets kind of hard if you don't use it enough, fast enough. And it's impossible to peel off. Try this roll here. Oh, man. All right. So here's the uh, the piece. I, I taped it together. I had to use duct tape. The other stuff was, wasn't kicking it. Um, so I have the, the depth set so it goes really, really close to the bottom. All right. Now, one minute I'm going to drill through the top right here. It's going to take a little bit of time, so get some popcorn. Or fast forward. Alright, so that's it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to record it two times. It's quite boring to watch probably, but drill out that hole right there. Same thing. Okay, and then you'll have your uh, your top will be done. I used my template here to drill out the holes here for the first half. So I'm going to repeat the same process on this side. So flip it over, take this template here, tape it down, and drill it out. Okay? Do the same thing on, that you did on this side to this side of the wood. So there you have it. This is the uh, two holes there, two holes there. Put the springs in there. I'm going to cut these off right here. And that's going to be the top. i got to route out the outsides. Route it out before I cut it off. 
just to make the edges a little softer. Okay, once I'm done that, now what I gotta do next is uh, take the template and drill out the base. So the base, you have two, four holes, two holes here and two holes on that side. So I have the top here already drilled out. I'm going to route out the outsides to make it easier on the hands to grab and then I'm going to cut it and have to route the uh, outside part. I'm going to do a little sand on the corners also. But uh, here's the base, right? So the base, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, give you an example. Here's the drill hole template. Here's the base. The base is a little wider than the top. I'm going to go in a one inch from the corner, from the end, drill my holes. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to aim for. So what I want to do, take my uh, T-square here, and set that. So I'm going to make sure it's lined up well. Okay, so I'm going to do one inch from here to here from the end. Okay, I'm just going to mark this off. <clears throat> Yeah, these dimensions are all experimental. I'm not really sure what's going to work best, but anyway. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Maybe one inch here. There you go. So now my holes, I'm going to drill my holes based on like that. So and just drill those holes down. So I'm going to tape this down right now and then uh, start drilling. So I marked this off a little bit to help me lay this top part down, the drill, you know, this drill template part. So what I did, right, from here to here is one inch. From the end to here, end to here, is three fourths of an inch. This is three inches, which is what this is from here, from here to here. So what will this what this will do is help me lay this piece down on top of it, and then I have lot uh, lines to guide my um, to guide me, and then I'll just tape it down. All right. Here's the uh, base taped down. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the holes out of the. Uh, this base using this template. I have my bit all set up already. All right. So there we go. It's gonna line that up. Okay, that's perfect. All right. So once I get that lined up, it's gonna go and drill it out.
Alright, there you have it. That's a nice clean hole. If you watched this video earlier, you'll notice that I struggled a bit with my bit. That's because the uh, when I was drilling the first piece, because the bit was so dull, I got a new bit, and that's why it went so much faster. So, you're going to do that four more times, I mean three more times. That there. Take this, flip it over, line it up, drill the other two sides. Alright? So here we have the two holes drilled out for the base. And my drill, my drill press is going to go with so deep with the uh, template on top of it. So what I need to do now is test and see if uh, the distance inside of this makes sense. So I'm going to put the uh, put the screws in, the uh, you know springs in. Okay, so there you go. They're all in. Um, Man, that's interesting. That's cool. All right, so that's it. That's <laughs> that's gonna be the wobbly handstand. Um, it looks good. It's great. It's a little a little sideways, but whatever. You know, we're working on stuff. That's how it works. So I think this is good. This is gonna work for uh, for most people, I think. Huh. So to give it a try. So again, this is what it looks like. Alright, so that's it right there. <laughs> it's not perfectly lined up with the top, but it's okay. Okay, I'm going to use two routers <coughs> and two different router bits to get this these edges better. I'm going to use this straight bit right here. Looks like this. Right? Um, it's got the bottom guide. I'm just going to go around it like that just to square this all off, make sure it's all flat on all all sides on the sides and then I'm gonna round off the edges with this round over bit right here so, so it just curves like that so I'm just gonna go around the corners all right and that's it so what I gotta do now is line up the bits to make sure the depth are, the depth is good this first bit here has to go below onto the second lip, but not so close to the actual bottom, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just pull this up a little bit. Okay, so that way I can have some space. There you go. So now the guide touches the bottom wood, so it's gonna cut off anything extra at the top, okay? So that one's, that, that one is set. Okay, the next router bit, that's a straight bit. Here's the uh, curve, curve, curve over bit. So I need to curve it over a little bit. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a depth. So just take a look at it again. You see how far down that is? It's like about three fourths of the way down. It's going to, and it's actually that's where the bearing is. Um, it's going to kind of cut like a little bit off the edge, round it out. I want to round it out a lot more because people's hands are going to be uh, touching that thing. A little bit more, so I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit deeper, so you get a nice, a, a bigger curved edge. All right, so I just lowered the bit more. All right, so I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm just giving more, more space here. All right, I think that's the most I can get out of it. Yep. Yes, that's it. So that's it. I'm gonna go that far, cut it out. I'm gonna ride it all around to ease off the edges to make it easier to hold on to. So what I did here, I um, on this side here, I just clamped the piece down, make sure it doesn't slide. This bottom part right here is the most. It's offset back that way, just a very very little bit, like maybe like less than a half of a la half of a. Sixteenths of an inch, so I'm going to use that bottom part and cut off the top on this side. And over here, the uh, this side sticks out. The top side is offset the most, but in general, more of it on the bottom is offset. So I'm going to use that as the guide for the for the router. So I'm going to do this side, flip it over to the other side.
So that's that. This is now perfectly flat with the top, right? What I'm gonna do is just continue around, flip it over, ride it all around again, and just keep on doing it until it gets perfectly flat. So just do that for the whole bottom, and then do the same thing for the top part, okay? So that way they all can be nice and squared off, and then we're gonna curve the edges. All right, so here we have the, uh, the sides. This is the top. They're all, f it's flat now. There's no more protruding any bottom or top. All the excess glue has been gone because it's, the router just cut it all away. That's the top. Here's the bottom. All right, bottom's the same thing. It's perfectly flat on all sides. So what I need to do now, right, is route out the, uh, the tops. I need to ease the tops to make it a little bit more comfortable. So to do, to do that, I'm gonna use this router bit and this router to go ahead and go ahead and cut around the tops and ease them out. So what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and uh, clamp this down. Alright, so once that's clamped down I'm going to go ahead and route it out, so let's give that a shot. Don't forget your respirator and your glasses. All right, there you go. So this is the uh, bottom of the, I'm sorry, the, uh, this is the bottom of the top part. It's all routed out nice and soft, okay? All you got to do now is do it th uh, three more times. So flip it over, do this side, get the, uh, the base and do the same thing. This side over here, flip it over and then do this side. So here we go, we have the top. I don't know if you can see it, it's all nice and soft on the edges. Yeah, see that? 
not so sharp anymore. All right, here's the bottom. The bottom, I just realized something. Yeah, you don't need to do the, you don't have to route the very, very bottom, the part that sits on the floor. Like that, that doesn't make any sense. Only this top part you need to route out where the holes are because that's the part that the person will probably come into contact with. Okay, so you need to make that soft. So you have that soft, and then this is all soft on all sides. Here's the problem though. With cheap plywood, you end up having these things happen. See this gaping hole right here? I don't know if you can see it or not. All right. So that actually will cause a problem. And there's another, another two right here. This one goes all the way through. You can see the light. Yeah, let's see. There you go. I don't know if you can see it, but it goes all the way through. And that's going to be a bit of a problem. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm, I'm going to have to put some wood putty in there and just sand it down. Because uh, you don't, it's going to fail over time. It's going to create a bit of a problem for the athlete. All right? So get better plywood when you do these things. This is just cheap, cheaper plywood I use because I needed to get a demo going as to what's, get some product information and then make a better, uh, make adjustments from there. So that's it. You're, all the sides are eased. I'm going to cut it, cut it, and then ease off the sides that, uh, that I haven't touched yet. And that's it. So here we have the base. Um, what I need to do, I need to cut the sides off now, right? So um, from here to here is one and a half inches, right? Let's just measure that again. Yep, so I need to go from here one and a half inches out. So that's going to look like, uh, let's see. Right, instead of doing it now, I can just loosen this up and just slide it. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to go one and a half inches out. And there you go. So now that's that cut right there. Where I'm going to do that cut matches this distance from here to here. So I'm going to go over there and cut that up. Go over to the other saw. Let's mark this one before we do that also. So from here to here is half of an inch. So this actually already has a mark in right here. So I'm just going to do it a little bit darker. Okay. So I'm going to cut this on that side. Cut this from that, that side, and I'm going to use these as my um, template to cut the other side. So what I have is the piece where the line is already set up to cut. And you can see it, maybe a little dark, but it's right there. So I got it bumped up against the edge right here. Drop the blade down, make sure it's on that line. I want to do a little bit past the line, so I'm going to loosen this up. Slide this over just a little bit. Okay, so that should work right around there. Double check that. Okay, yeah, so that's that. Now I'm going to cut it. Don't forget your respirators and your glasses. That's it, we have two bases now, okay? So let's do the same thing for the, uh, can you see that? Yeah, all right, so you have two bases now. So let's do the same thing for the, for the tops, okay? So. 
I use this extra piece of wood just to help me have something to push against. Alright, so that's going to be the top, right? It's all set up and lined again. Don't forget your respirator and your glasses again. All right, there you have it. So you have two tops and you have two bottoms, okay? And those are all the pieces that you need for the actual handset trap. So you get to see this hard sides, these hard sides right here, we're gonna need to ease those out. So make sure that, they, um, that they're not uncomfortable for the athlete. So what I have here is the top part, the bottom part of the, uh, actually the top part of the top part. This is the hard edge that I have. I'm just going to like route out this very edge right here and then that should be it. I'm going to ease ease out, ease the corners as they call it. Okay? Again, don't forget your glasses and your respirator. Alright, so that's it. That's the top now. All the sides are eased, so you don't have any hard edges anymore. So do the same for all four sides. Alright, so here we have all the pieces for this wobbly handstand trainer, right? The, uh, remember I told you about the little, the little holes along the top like that? You're gonna have to, like, get rid of those cracks in the in the plywood. Sometimes they're really bad, like this is a really bad one. See the light all the way through? That's just unbelievable. Anyway, this is again, use better plywood. It costs more money, but you won't have that problem when you go to make a project like this. Okay, this is uh, cheaper plywood because I'm using it because I need to collect information before I start to make a, a final product that's more durable. Um, to fill that gap, I'm gonna use this thing called plastic wood. Um, it's a lot of euphemisms you can extract from that one. But anyway, uh, plastic wood, uh, the, the, the non-lubricant, the lubricant-free uh, 
doesn't hide in your closet when your kids come over version. Uh, this is going to use that for your uh, to patch those holes. Um, all right, so when you do that, to get these holes, you're going to have to lubricate these holes a little bit because you're going to have a lot of problems putting the springs in. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm going to use for that. So this is uh, Butcher's Bolin Alley Wax. I don't think they make it anymore. But I'm not sure. Some other company, I think, bought this out. But uh, what you're going to do is use this wax to, uh, to um, uh, just kind of make this a little easier to, to actually open up. So what we're going to do is just crack this open here. So what we're going to do is take a little, a lot of this wax, rub it in the these holes, just to help with um, getting the uh, springs in. Springs can be a little difficult. Just rub that in there. All the holes. All right, so you get a lot of like wax in all these holes, right? And what we're gonna do is, uh, once that wax, yeah, that's good. So all this wax does is just helps us place the springs into the into the uh, the actual uh, holes. And if everything goes well, okay, that's one. Those are all the way down. Okay, so that's that. Let's put this together. Yep, that's all the way down. Perfect. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen, you have yourselves seeing for the first time put together this is the open source version of wobbly canes so take a look at them you can see what they do All right, so handstand at acrobat will be on top of it and a handstand like this just working a handstand it moves a lot so you know they're gonna be pretty good at a handstand to be able to hold this thing okay so that's it we're done that's the project. Hope that you get to uh, play with it. If it's successful for you, um, go ahead and tag me, like, and subscribe below. That's down here. All right. I really enjoyed making this. I hope that you got to get a lot of use out of it, and I hope that uh, it's something that can improve your handstand practice. All right. Thank you for watching another uh, episode of This Damn House. Really hope that you enjoy this uh, project. Uh, they're wobbly handstand trainer canes. Uh, very useful if you have a really good handstand practice already. If you want to improve it, this is going to tell you, take it to another level. So it helps you balance on like movable sub uh, objects, such as if you're happen to be doing a handstand on someone's shoulders or their back or their knee or their elbow. You know, um, it's a good project. Really fun, easy to make. You can do it in a, in a weekend, uh, just one day to be honest with you. Um, this is the final project right here. That's what they look like. So, handstand and wobbly canes. Uh, all the information about the piece will be available in the, inf in the description. So just go ahead and uh, take a look below. I'll show you where you get all the springs and the parts. I was really thankful to have uh, a great source for these springs that I want to share with you. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, comments or things that you saw that we can do better or improvements or sourcing for springs and things like that 
definitely send us, uh, send me a message and uh, go ahead and like and subscribe below. Um, if you like this project as much as I did, and if you like enjoyed uh, the process of sharing these things uh, with the way that I share with you, and you can value what, uh, if you have value for what is uh, being offered, definitely go ahead and help me out. You know, um, these videos take a long time to edit and uh, and to shoot, and they take a lot of resources. The tools, you know, I need better tools always, you know, and uh, it's going to help me do a better job. It's going to help me uh, help you see how to make things and empower you. So I'm a big fan of open source. I think knowledge should be not owned by anybody. And um, if you agree... And if you understand the importance of open source, definitely support me. Go ahead and like and subscribe the page. Look for me on Facebook, uh, Motion Design Studio. Instagram, slash Motion Design Studio. YouTube, slash Motion Design Studio. And uh, send me a message. Let me know what you think. Uh, I love to engage and hear from you. I'm Lex Peters. Can't go wrong. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. All right? And uh, check out my Amazon wish list because it'll... Help me, uh, those are the things I need to help me do a better job. Okay? Thanks a lot. Have a good day, and I hope that this project was, uh, is useful to you.